Hey everybody, this is Brian from PMB Homesteading. Wanted to show you the update for the large grow tent. And uh, kind of an update, you know, the last few few updates have been getting kind of boring to me. You know, thinking, ah, oh, I got tomatoes growing in there. And, uh, you know, I really wanted to see what I could ramp up for production wise as a urban homesteader doing a under house grow tent garden during the winter. And so I've made some drastic changes inside the tent and hopefully it'll keep you guys interested and you'll uh, be kind of, you know, wanting to follow along and see all these different things growing in here. So let me go ahead and unzip the tent and you can kind of get a first peek at it. Let me put my goggles on because it's gotten a little bit brighter in there since the, uh, the last time you saw this tent. So here we go. Quite a few changes in the tent this week from last week. As you'll notice, the tomatoes are gone. The reason they're gone is this, they don't produce enough yield for the amount of electricity and heating that I'm putting into it. So I wanted to have something that was going to be high yield. So I built something kind of cool. So let's we'll start with what the what the tray table is. This is basically OSB with some two by fours put on here, and I made an L shape. And as part of this, I guess I'll have to step in the tent and kind of show you guys. I put tile, I put plastic on top of it, and then I put tile down. Some old tile pieces we had from a you know bathroom remodel and our kitchen remodel we did a few years ago. So I put those down on top so that way they're going to kind of retain some of the heat because the tile will absorb the, the heat from the inside of the tent and when the lights are off, it'll radiate that heat back out. So it's sort of like a geothermal sink you want to call it that it's not going to be much of one but it will help a little bit push some of that heat back up into these big uh, trays and on this piece move down here a little bit this L shape here that hooks onto the main piece it's hinged so underneath right here I have two latches like you'd have on a dining room table where you spin it and you unlatch it and then I've got two door hinges old door hinges up here on the top that you just pop the pin out of each of those and you'll be able to take this whole right side off. If I ever wanted to put like, you know, a grow tomato plant back in here on this one side, this whole thing actually swings upward and comes off. So you can actually have a removable tray on the side on this part over here. And I've got these sitting on a couple of uh, sawhorses. I keep putting my finger in front of the camera and it kind of zooms in on my finger. But uh, there's sawhorses underneath that are holding all this up. And so it's pretty sturdy. Each one of those sawhorses can hold up to 800 pounds. So it's a you know pretty solid mounting, and it's not tippy at all. I mean this thing is is rock solid. When I wiggle this thing, it doesn't move. But uh, so that's that's kind of the trace that set up. Now the lights, I've taken all my LEDs. These are my uh, Mars Hydros, and I've got them over each one of these bays. Each each one of these trays has an LED above it, so you've got plenty of light for all the greens that are going to be growing in there. And I'll go over what's going to be in the greens next. But in the trays that we've got over here that have already have plants, those are the ones that were down below in the same trays in the, uh, the two gallon pots. Or is it five gallon? I can't remember which one I had them in. But uh, so I've got the cilantro, I've got the peony parsley, I've got the garlic chives. So it's got like a kind of like little uh, herb garden mixes in these two trays of all the, the plants that were growing before down below. So those are put in those trays. Over here, we've got this tray here. It's got a Bates kale. See the little tag there, Bates kale. And so that whole tray is gonna be kale. Over here, we've got beta salad mix. So I took all the beta salad mixes and put them into this tray. And in the back of that tray right over there. So that, that we got our betas. The beta salad mixes were removed from, except for the one that's inside the salad bar LED area. That's, that's the only one that's not in here right now. So I'm gonna make these more of a long-term growing you know, cycle. And then what I also wanna do, when I get done with these trays, I won't be dumping these on the compost heap. I'm actually gonna to start to do a cover crop in some of these trays on rotation, where I will basically take some plastic, I'm gonna cover up the tops of these trays, wilt down all the, the you know, previous greens as sort of like a chop and drop. I'm gonna seed that with some of my clover that I've got. This is the kind of an experiment I want to do. To see how much I can boost the nitrogen inside these trays. Let the clover grow up a little bit 
for maybe you know a couple of weeks then I'm gonna put the plastic back on top of that let that wilt down and then I'm going to put a new layer of compost on the top you know some of it will be for my worm castings you know from the worm bin and then I'll seed that and then I want to see if I can actually get rotational fertility put into the trays inside of this tin so that's just something I want to try. It's kind of the thing I do outdoors, but I want to try doing it inside of here and see how that works out. And then also start bringing in some worms and putting them in here. So it'll be kind of interesting to see if you know I can create an indoor garden setup that's going to be rotationally diverse enough to where I can actually have like almost a garden. I even thought about putting in some carrots and stuff, but maybe that'll be a little later on, or you know maybe putting in some beets. Because a lot of these, like the beta mixes, are a, a beet variety. They've got like the Detroit Red uh, beet in there. And if you let it get big enough, you'll actually get a beet head growing. But, you know, that'll be a later project. So, something to, you know, keep the channel interesting and all my indoor growing interesting to me as we get into the, you know, the depths of winter and, you know, everybody's getting bored with seeing my tomato plants. But uh, let's see. So, for the new tray, so this one here, we've got a white Russian kale. It's going to be in that tray there. And this one here. We've got the uh, red Russian kale, and as I mentioned over there, it's going to be the Vates kale. And then the new addition also to this tent is the little grow bags. So this is the little setup that I built for hanging the grow bags. So I've mentioned, you know, in a video a while back, I was going to get some grow bag media and start doing something with a hanging bag. So that's it there. So there's 18 little six inch pots. I think I mentioned in a video when I was going to get this, I thought, oh, I could stick maybe my one gallon pots in there. Yeah, this, uh, th the looks are a little deceptive from what I saw in the, uh, the ad <laughs> on Amazon. But uh, it's a, uh, you know, pretty cool little grow bag. I built this frame for it out of uh, used uh, three by threes for the, uh, like a pallet we got when we got, uh, when we were doing some of our remodeling. I always save all the old pallet wood so that way I can use it for other projects. But I use that, so I, I put in some eyelets. I've got some uh, deck brackets, you know, corner bracing. I put in the corners there, screwed in the top. I got some uh, old, see these little hooks? These are uh, part of that, you know, like when you get a light fixture and you have that light chain that comes with it, I always save that extra chain. And so I use that to make the uh, little hooks. And then uh, just filled the, uh, pots up with the garden compost that I have under here, this organic grow comp, you know, compost, you know, soil. Put that in there, put some bone meal, and I'm going to be growing, for the first round in this, I'm going to be growing uh, Caribe cilantro, sort of like the cilantro we got growing over there. I'm going to have that growing in these bags. I want to see how well they do. And then this is my idea. I have another LED light just like this, the Rolado Natural Daylighter. I have one more of these, but I put this one on an angle hung up with the uh, some of that extra chain, light cord chain. And then up there, I like to use those shower, these are old shower curtain rod uh, clamps. So you hook that around there, you clamp it, you hang on your, uh, your chain, then you got the light fixture hooked onto that, and then I've got a uh, little bungee strap for the back one. So that kind of puts it at an angle. So let the camera refocus here. But it puts the light at an angle, so it kind of shines it down onto the plants like that to make it seem like a little angled light. So if, I, if this doesn't give enough light for the lower ones down there, I am going to hang another one down in this area here where the poinsettia is and kind of angle it so that way it'll shine down in the bags. Because there are some shade spots down there you can see underneath these bags because they overhang each other. So if, it, you know, if I notice the germination rate's not too good, I can always fix that. But this is gonna be kind of an interesting little side project to uh, see if I can grow some extra herbs for Paula. She does love cilantro and we have a lot of that. We put it into our, our tacos and stuff we have on Tuesday. And then I put a little drip pan down below with a little board behind it to kind of guide it so the water kind of drips down through the buckets or the pots. And then it gets down to the bottom and then it will collect down in that little tray down there. So that way we don't have a mess all over the floor of the, uh, the grow tent. But that's kind of the update for the uh, large tent for today. And of course, you know, we still have the little poinsettia. He's getting ready for Christmas next weekend. To, you know, next next Monday is going to be Christmas, so we'll be bringing him up to the house. But uh, I'm pretty pleased with uh, the change in the tent. It's given me renewed vigor in my uh, 
desire to come down here and play because it's almost like having a little garden from the outdoors right inside because you know the tomatoes are really great but I wanted to have that variety so that way I've got tons of things to come down here and talk about and show you guys and then maybe you guys will be inspired to want to have uh, some kind of setup like this on your own but uh, I don't know. I, I get all excited about this stuff. I just love looking at it. I've been down here all day. I didn't even wash my hands yet. I'm still, I'm still dirty as heck. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Take off my goggles here. Let the camera focus in on my, my mug. <laughs> all right. This has been Brian from P&B Homesteading. Hope you guys have a wonderful holidays. Talk to you again. All right. Bye.